I think that we're ready to go. And I'd like to introduce Erin Brown Zivin. She is the chair of the Comparative Literature Department. Welcome. Thank you so much, Catherine. Welcome, everyone. Um, if you are attending the webinar, since we can't see your face right now, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat using the chat function. Um, we have a number of faculty and staff members from Comparative Literature today. We're going to tell you a little bit about Comparative Literature and especially uh, about Comparative Literature and Dornsife um, during this fall semester when we're going to be starting, as you know, online and really are hoping to maintain contact with, um, with students in between, you know, among the whole co uh, community of Comparative Literature uh, virtually while we're at home. So as um, Catherine said, my name is Erin graf -Zivin. I'm department chair until Friday. Uh, I will be on leave this year. Um, during my leave, uh, Professor Ledi Modeleno will be interim chair of comparative literature. Um, and so I would love to give Professor Modeleno the opportunity to introduce herself to you right now. And unmute. Ledi, can you take yourself off mute? Yes. There we go, perfect. So hello everybody, these are my last, uh, my last days of uh, freedom before I step in uh, next uh, week to be uh, interim chair of uh, the department. So I'm really looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to welcoming everybody uh, via a lot of Zoom meetings and uh, activities that uh, we are in the process of planning uh, for you. Um, I am a relatively new member at USC. I've been uh, here three years. Um, my uh, life uh, trajectories have taken me from uh, France, where I was born, to uh, the Congo, where my father was born, uh, to uh, the University of Colorado, to Berkeley, somewhere on the East Coast, and then back in uh, California. Uh, my interest in uh, comparative literature, in a sense, uh, kind of mirrors this because I, I love to cross borders, I love to travel, uh, I also love to uh, encounter people in difference. And uh, my attraction to uh, comparative literature, in a sense, is this kind of comfort zone of being uh, on the move, maybe not so much uh, these last months, but of being on the move and of transforming myself while uh, on the move. Um, it's a comfort zone, uh, like a familiar place to be, to be traveling, to be encountering people, uh, but it's also a challenge. And uh, I believe that uh, comparative literature is also a place where you challenge yourself by stepping out of your comfort zone and by, by encountering not only the familiar, but also um, the different, the non-familiar. So there are surprises uh, in store for you. There are challenges, uh, but there are, there's also a lot of uh, comfort. So we'll make sure that, um, that this is also um, in plan for you. In my teaching, my teaching uh, reflects uh, my scholarly interests uh, in uh, regions, in topics, in issues. Uh, such as writing itself, such as uh, theory, such as, again, traveling, maybe the traveling of, uh, of theories, of books, of uh, narratives. I'm going to teach in the uh, incoming semesters, uh, a course that will be a new course, uh, which I called Fictions of Africa. And uh, so I'm going to look with the class at the ways in which Africa is constructed by storytelling, by narratives, by, by the visual, by discourses, um, across different uh, periods in time and across uh, different cultural traditions, including Africa itself. So this is just one uh, example of the kind of uh, courses that uh, you would get from me, but I'm sure they echo other courses uh, equally, uh, equally original and equally interesting that my colleagues will uh, talk about. Harry? Thank you so much. Um, and now it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Natanya Meeker, who is Professor of French and Italian and Comparative Literature. I should have said that Professor Mazzarino is Professor of French and Italian, Comparative Literature, and American Studies and Ethnicity. 
Um, Natanya Meeker is our Director of Undergraduate Studies, um, so she'll introduce herself now, and then after everyone introduces themselves, she'll also have some information to share about Dornsife and Colt events uh, this semester. Thank you so much, Erin. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Natanya Meeker, and I'm Director of Undergraduate Studies for Colt. And I think some of you who are watching, I, I know already, welcome back. And I'm really excited to welcome the new members of our community, too. Um, as, as some of you know, I think I'm um, trained in the, in the 18th century, um, particularly interested in Enlightenment um, French and Francophone literature. Um, but most recently, I've been working on a co-authored uh, book project um, with Antonio Sabari, who's a, a colleague in comparative literature as well, that focuses on plants and radical ecology. And it's been a really interesting and, and in many ways sort of galvanizing time to think about plants. Um, and often, lately, I felt a little bit like a plant myself. Um, uh, uh, potted in my in my house, um, so I continue to um, to want to think um, with and around plant life. But I'm also turning back at the moment to my 18th century roots um, with a project on uh, philosophy, women, um, and political protest um, through and around modes of femininity. Um, so I'm I've been excited to. Uh, think more about um, gender and queer theory um, and to, to work with students um, on those modes of theory as well. Coming up um, this semester, I'm going to be teaching the um, Introduction to Literary Theory, Cult 302. This will be the second time that I've taught the course. I can't wait. It was an incredible experience for me to work with um, USC students the first time around on that course, and, I, and I'm excited to do so again. Um, this semester. Um, I also teach courses on speculative fiction, um, with, which is a genre very close to my heart. Um, and on the 18th century, I'll be teaching another course this semester for French um, on equality and difference around the Enlightenment, uh, which looks at representations of uh, race and gender um, across the 18th century and how they affect the contemporary ways of thinking about um, subjectivity. Um, so those are just a few things about uh, my work and myself. I also have two dogs who may make an appearance at some point and a little girl who may do so as well. Um, but it's just a real pleasure to, uh, to introduce myself and, and meet everyone uh, virtually. Thank you, Erin. Thanks so much, Natanya. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Panevang Narendra, who is former chair of the Department of Comparative Literature and will be interim director of undergraduate studies during the spring semester when Professor Meeker is on leave. And I believe we'll also be teaching in the comparative literature department this year. Good. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Bani Norinder. Um, I have taught uh, both undergraduate and graduate courses in comparative literature. But in the spring, I will be teaching for the first time a course on globalization. Um, but obviously, I've taught a lot around the topic, and I really look forward to teaching this course. Um, I've taught more recently courses on, on cinema, uh, uh, Southeast Asian cinema uh, called 379, but also um, courses in, in, in on French cinema. So, uh, and my area of specialization is postcolonial theory. So I look forward to meeting many of you and hopefully to have you in my classes too. Thanks so much. Um, so because comparative literature is a relatively small department, um, students often comment that they're drawn to the department because they get a lot of attention from faculty. So the reason why I wanted to have current and entering chair, current and entering directors of undergraduate studies is because in addition to working with our wonderful advisor, Dominique Calcar, um, uh, uh, um, you should always feel welcome to contact any of us if you have any questions, not only about the major or minor, about the classes you're taking, but any kinds of questions about career paths. Um, many of our alumni have gone on to uh, study not only uh, comparative literature, a few recent 
uh, graduates are now getting master's degrees and PhDs in literary uh, studies programs at Harvard and Cambridge and Cornell, um, but also law school. We have recent graduates from Berkeley Law School, from Stanford, um, some who have gone on to Teach for America, and many who are working in the media and entertainment industry here in Los Angeles. So we're all available to talk about these possible future paths as well as your current course choices. So Dominique, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Dominique Moye. Um, I just recently got married, so it used to be Hall Carr, but now Moye. Um, I am the academic advisor. Congratulations, and I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so welcome. I'm the academic advisor. I can assist you um, with, you know, understanding what classes to choose. Um, I look out for an email. I do hope to have some walk-in hours, um, especially these coming weeks, to you know support you as much as possible. But as mentioned by Aaron, um, the art department is so small, but it's um, very nice that you get to talk to everyone. You're gonna feel supported by not just your advisor, you're gonna be able to talk to the director and the chair and it's just we just are one uh small knit family in a sense so welcome uh ask me any questions if you you know offline if you have questions but i'm here for all of your advising needs thank you so much dominique and congratulations again um so you already met Catherine Guevara, who's our wonderful program specialist and always available for questions um in normal semesters, you just walk into the comparative literature office and she's there uh, ready to help, um, but she is always available to answer any questions by uh, email. Um, moving on to, we have two um, postdoctoral teaching fellows that I'm thrilled to introduce. The first is Nike Nivar Ortiz, who will be teaching this fall. Hi, thank you, Erin. Um, so my name is Nike Nivar Ortiz and I am super excited to be joining the comparative literature department uh, as a postdoc. Um, my research is on contemporary American imperialism in a Latin American context, and particularly the role of drone and surveillance technologies in places like the US-Mexico border, but also urban city centers with high populations of color. Um, I will be teaching Code 375 this fall, um, which is a Latin American culture and literary theory course, which is cross-listed uh, in the Spanish department. Um, I thought because it was comparative literature and this current time right now that the, the theme of borders would be really useful as a touchstone um, to investigate key currents in Latin American studies. Um, so we'll start with the US-Mexico border, but also move around to think about Central America and sort of the start of the migrant trail as well as other spaces like um, the Haiti and Dominican Republic border and explore questions of race and language there. Um, in the spring, I'll be teaching um, Cult 312, a Heroes and Myths course, which should be really fun, um, and Cult 470, which is uh, a Latin, uh, Latin American media course. Um, I did my undergrad at Vassar, which did not have a comparative literature department. Um, so I ended up majoring in English and Hispanic studies, which meant I had to do double the requirements and double the work essentially. Uh, so it's really amazing that uh, USC has a comparative literature department for people interested in interdisciplinary work, which I've always been. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to join this department um, with people who are doing such interesting and diverse work. Thank you so much. And our next, um, a uh, wonderful uh, member of the teaching faculty this fall is Sarah Skillen, a recent graduate of our PhD program. Actually, both are recent graduates of our PhD program in comparative studies in literature and culture. And Sarah will be teaching Colt 475 Politics in the Novel this fall. Sarah? Thank you so much, Erin. I'm really excited to be um, rejoining the Colt's uh, faculty and staff here at USC and working with our undergraduates again. Um, I, as Aaron said, I just graduated uh, from the CSLC Comparative Studies in Literature and Culture doctoral program. And um, my work uh, focuses on the Caribbean of the 19th and 20th centuries, looking at uh, maternity as a concept of um, relation and an ethics that breaks down the borders between islands and 
um, between individuals that essentially um, perforates like the legal fictions that establish uh, the legitimacy and um, of the nation and of colonialism. And I'm uh, looking forward to bringing some of these concepts to the Colt 475 class that I'll be teaching. Um, this course, this class is going to look at speaking beings and the novel as an act of politics. And we'll begin by looking at um, the concept of monstrosity. So I'm interested in monstrous mothers and uh, the monster as a speaking being itself and the way um, there can be a beauty in a sort of monstrous politics. So we'll begin with um, Ocean Vong's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous and um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And then from there, continuing into questions of immigration and um, race and also um, quarantine and looking at sickness as a way of also defining the limits of the national body and of the individual body. Um, I'm really excited to be working with all of you and um, getting to know my students. I um, also, I did my undergraduate at the University of Notre Dame and majored in Spanish and history. And then um, as a scholar of Cuban descent, I was very much interested in working on Cuba, but also looking at the uh, unique relationships that exist between the different literary and cultural um, entities of the Caribbean, which is why what drew me to the comparative literature uh, program at USC and um, why I'm really excited to see what our students have to say and bring to the course. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as you can see <clears throat> from just the selection of faculty who are here today, we have um, very global uh, interests in our department. Uh, we, our faculty um, study and teach on um, Asian, East Asian, Southeast Asian, South Asian literature and film and media, Latin American, North American, European, North African, Sub-Saharan African, and the list goes on. So it's really, it's really quite, uh, quite exciting. Um, again, just a reminder that if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, we'd love to hear who or read who is here. And if you have any questions either about courses or anything like that, please also use the chat or I think the Q&A button also works for that. Um, I'm going to now turn it back to Professor Meeker, who is going to talk a bit about Dornsife and Colt events this fall. Great. Thank you so much, Erin. Um, sorry, I got briefly distracted by my image on the screen. Um, oh, first, I'd like to um, uh, say a little bit about some of the events for new students that the, the college is holding. I'll do this very quickly because I think that most of you watching are actually not incoming students, but I wanted to share with you um, some of the things that the college, um, that Dornsife will be organizing. Uh, can everyone see that? Or, or Catherine or Erin, could you tell me if you can't see that perhaps? Um, let me take you to the first slide. So to, whoop, my apologies. Uh -oh. Okay, so there's gonna be a, a new student fall kickoff today. Um, and then on Thursday, the Dornsife virtual roommate launch, um, a first generation college student event uh, next week on Tuesday and a transfer student welcome. Um, on Thursday of next week as well. And I encourage all of you who may be new students to um, take advantage of some of these opportunities to, uh, to create community, um, to ask questions, to get support, um, and just to get a little bit more of a substantial sense, even in our virtual context of um, the other wonderful people who uh, will be and are around you this semester. Um, I'm going to the next slide. There will also be a series of events on academic success and um, how to make the most of um, online learning, as they, as they call it. Um, I'll actually be speaking at the Humanities event, um, which is taking place on Tuesday, August 25th, from 5 to 6 p.m. So that's going to be a uh, discussion with faculty, staff, and student panelists about um, academic success uh, 
for, during the online semester. So there's an event for the humanities on the 25th, for the social sciences on the 26th, and for the natural sciences on the 27th. And I believe those are all at 5 p.m. to accommodate students who might be in different time zones. Um, and then finally, uh, wanted to bring to your attention a couple more events, a pre-health event, um, which I'm not sure has a date, sorry, date set for it yet. Um, and then uh, the Dornsife Connection Involvement Opportunities uh, event series, which is gonna start on Tuesday, September 1st, and a health event and wellness series, um, which will start on September 9th. Um, so if any of that is of interest to you, I encourage you to mark your calendar. And if you do have questions about that, I'm happy to take them to um, the Dornsife Dean's Office. I'm happy to mediate in any way if you feel like you need mediation. Um, so, so feel very free to reach out to me, especially if you're a new, a new student. Um, I'm going to close this and I also wanted to just show you because I'm so excited about these, the classes that we have coming up for this fall. Whoops, I'm going to uh, share screen again. Sorry, there we go. Um, Wanted to just take you through really briefly some of the other classes that we'll be offering. Here we go. Um, you've heard about uh, the wonderful uh, courses that um, Professor Nivar and Professor Skillen will be teaching. I wish I could take all of these courses. Um, but just wanted to show you a few of the other offerings that we have. It's just such an exciting and rich and wide ranging semester. I won't spend much time on this one. It's my course. Um, if you have any questions about that one, uh, please feel very free to re reach out to me. Um, it's the intro to literary theory. Um, and I've tried to include um, a diverse and galvanizing uh, group of authors. We'll be um, thinking specifically about the way in which theory creates worlds for us to inhabit um, and actively shapes our worlds. Uh, many of you already know our um, incredible colleague, Professor Michaela Duplessis, who will be teaching two courses for us this semester, one on literature and pop culture, which looks tremendous. Um, and you can see a little bit, a few of the readings there. I encourage you to check that out. Um, and then this is uh, Professor Ortiz's uh, class, which as you've already heard, uh, is just gonna be fantastic. Um, Professor Nitu Kana, another colleague whom many of you maybe already know, um, who also teaches in thematic option uh, regularly, will be uh, teaching gender and sexuality in literary theory. Um, I'm gonna keep repeating myself and say this is yet another class that I would love to take. Um, the readings look just fabulous, um, including Judith Butler, Jose Munoz, Sylvia Winter, Octavia Butler, Audrey Lord, many, many more. Um, another just fabulous offering by uh, Professor Kana. Um, and this is the second of uh, Professor Duplessis classes. Um, her class on the fantastic, um, which is a regular offering for us. Um, and um, it's going to include uh, readings by Angela Carter, Hans Christian Andersen, H.P. Lovecraft, Oscar Wilde, Sylvina Ocampo, also Octavia Butler and uh, Mary Shelley, um, and some just fabulous films as well. Um, finally, a new class. Uh, uh, with Professor Devin Griffiths, who uh, has recently joined our uh, department with a joint appointment um, on comparatism in history and theory, um, which I also would love to take. Um, and that is the range of our offerings this semester. Uh, many of you, I think, are already enrolled in some of those. So I hope you're looking forward to them as, as much as I am. Finally, I just wanted to say, a word or two about some of the events that we have coming up. I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, we are in the process of organizing a, a trivia event um, to replace our um, semester, our regular um, semesterly 
uh, meeting uh, that we usually hold as an ice cream social. Uh, so Catherine Guevara and I have been in talks about the possibility of turning that into a trivia experience. Um, and I'm, I'm a little trepidatious about my own ability to um, sort of handle the trivia, but I, I have great confidence in, in Catherine. So, so together we will be working on that possibility. And that should be coming up um, probably in September, um, possibly um, in October. Um, we will also uh, plan to uh, visit classes, as we always do, um, to say hello to everybody. I'll be visiting along with our new chair, Professor Lidi Mureleno, whom you have also met, um, and uh, with Dominique Moyer, too. So that's another opportunity to talk to all of us, to ask us questions, um, to see us in the context of your classes. Um, and finally, some of you may know that we were um, in, in conjunction with a wonderful group of students um, thinking about organizing last semester um, a student conference. Um, we do do an honor showcase every year, but we were uh, in the process of working on an um, in-person student conference around literary theory when COVID hit. And um, sadly, we had to cancel that, but uh, the department has been looking into making that an event that we could do virtually in the spring. So if any of you would be interested in planning such an event or being involved in that kind of planning, I would encourage you to reach out to me or to Professor Murleno um, or to Catherine Guevara, um, we would like to uh, do something virtually to bring our students together um, intellectually and to, to think together and to um, conspire together um, in the comparative uh, literary context. Finally, I also want to say that one of the really special things about the department, as, as Dominique so, so beautifully said, um, is its closeness, its smallness too. Um, and I have been working as advisor um, and I know that Professor Norander will, will continue with this um, to place students in classes that really excite them and interest them. And um, one of the things that I've been trying to do is to, where, where possible, um, allow students who have the preparation to take graduate seminars um, and to really be able to explore their own intellectual interests um, in, in that context, but also in the context of, of the honors program. So I want to encourage all of you and particularly fresh, fresh, uh, fresh first years and sophomores um, to think about um, honors. Um, our honors program is a year long program. Uh, you would do a first semester that would be a directed research with a faculty member of your choice. And then the sem second semester where you're writing the paper again um, under the guidance of a faculty member so it's really an opportunity to pursue a longer research project in depth um, and to get a taste of what it means to be doing um, advanced and original research in the context of um, comparative literature. Uh, so I want to, to, to say to the new students too, those are, those are things that I would invite you to think about as options to explore later on um, as you continue in the major and minor. Um, I think that that, that is uh, my, I, I have hopefully fulfilled my charge of things to talk about. Um, so uh, thank you again, Erin, and again, welcome everyone. I look forward to, to seeing everybody virtually um, soon. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to hear about all of the exciting events and plans for this year. And of course, if you as the students have any ideas uh, that you would want to propose, whether it's a virtual field trip uh, or a reading group or some kind of cultural activity or an, yet another social uh, event, um, we are happy to organize and to provide resources for that to happen. We're here for you and um, uh, would be happy to hear of any uh, creative ideas that you may have. So um, we now have a few minutes for any kinds of questions. Um, so I'll just allow myself to, this is what I, I have learned uh, as a teacher, to I'll allow an awkward silence, which is really hard to do on Zoom. <laughs> I'll wait a few minutes, and I'll also allow um, faculty and staff to add anything that um, has occurred to them during the course of this meeting that they forgot to say. Actually, I wanted to ask Natanya and Dominique, what are the most frequently asked questions that you get from our undergraduate students as you're doing peer advising and whatnot? 
Natan, you want to go or? Okay. <laughs> um, I think I probably get asked most about um, courses is sort of fa faculty style and um, fit uh, between um, particular courses and, and particular students. And I'm very, very um, happy to advise on that. We have uh, all of our faculty, um, without exception, are, are wonderful. Um, but I, I do enjoy um, putting students together um, with faculty who, who can really spark their, their interest and excitement. So that's, that's a question I get asked fairly often. I think I also get asked about course substitutions. This is something that, this is a somewhat more technical question. Um, and maybe Dominique can say something about that too. In general, I think we've tried to be open to substitutions, but there is, there is a limit uh, set by the university on how many substitutions we can approve. So um, it's good to know that that's an option, but also I think good to know about the limit. Um, so those would be two two sort of orders of questions that I often get. Dominique? I would say same way what you said, Nat Natanya, um, definitely substitution questions are very high on the list. Another question I get asked a lot is, um, can our courses be taken sequentially um, or do they have to be uh, taken sequentially? And they don't. Um, so that's really nice to know because sometimes we don't offer some courses in some semesters. So, um, that's really good to know. Um, and also another question I'm asked a lot is, um, can, we, can they study abroad? Can students study abroad and get credit uh, with comparative literature? And the answer is yes, but we do have to review it together um, with the department. But yes, we do encourage studying abroad opportunities. I also wanted to add um, that I, I often get asked about graduate school um, and graduate school applications, particularly in the humanities, and I'm very, very happy to consult on those questions. So I, I, um, if any of you have questions about uh, the possibility of graduate school, different kinds of institutions, um, options and, and alternatives, um, very, very happy to think about future plans as well as present plans. Thank you for that question, Catherine. That's a great question. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm adding to the chat also links to our faculty roster. If you would like to just check out different faculty teaching and research interests, even if it's not someone who's teaching this semester, or even this year, faculty members are always available for you. So if you have an interest and you see that someone is working in that area of interest, please feel free to reach out. Uh, set up an appointment with them virtually at this point um, to talk about your research interests and maybe you can um, work out something for a future um, independent study. And Catherine is going to add our Instagram handle. I just posted a link to our Facebook page. We have a YouTube page with previous events. You can watch videos of lectures that we posted on media studies, um, on film, on uh, uh, Latin American studies. Um, we've had a, a bunch of really uh, exciting lectures in recent years. Uh, yes, okay, so we have uh, Instagram. Instagram is our most regular, uh, 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 that we, we have, we have uh, posts I think every day on Instagram. So definitely make sure uh, that you follow us on Instagram. And um, any questions before we say goodbye? Erin, could I jump in for a second? Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, say that, uh, as you mentioned, um, my colleague, Professor Norder, is going to be so generously and graciously taking over for me in the spring as Director of Undergraduate Studies. And I wanted to say to all of you who may or may not have had an opportunity to work with Professor Norder, um, already. I, I'm only sort of attempting to to follow in his footsteps as DUS. He, he was um, had served as, as DUS for a very long time concurrently with uh, his work as chair and he is just um, has long been for me a, a professionally a guiding light. So I, I know you all are going to be in tremendously good hands with him. He's been talking about um, either doing, if it's possible, an in-person um, cult trip excursion, um, uh, possibly to a local museum or cultural institution. If it's not possible to do that in person, um, doing that virtually. So uh, he has some wonderful ideas coming up for the spring. And I also wanted to say to those of you that I've been in sort of 
uh, regular correspondence with, I, I'll also, I'm not dropping off the face of the earth, so I'm also very happy to continue to correspond in the spring. And um, if you ever have questions that you want to bring to the, to the two of us, um, I'm very happy to continue to be online for you in that way. So I just want to mention how great um, Pani is. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Uh, let me respond to this because I, I am a bit embarrassed. Um, well, thank you for those, those generous words. But I was going to say to the student, it, it's going to be a hard, uh, it's going to be hard to follow in your footsteps. Uh, and I hope to be able to do as, as, as well as you, as you have done for, for Colt. And uh, thank you. So I'm looking forward to, to meeting all of you in person uh hopefully this spring when when we're all vaccinated thank you Pani. well thank you so much to everyone for attending for um participating um if you have any questions that occur to you later please feel free to reach out to any of us um, we have many emails that have been uh, shared in the chat um, but as i said the faculty roster is available on the cult website um, we're available to you and we're here to support you as you navigate this um, difficult semester. Uh, so thank you all. Good luck, stay well, stay safe, and we hope to see you in person very soon. Bye everyone.